Hello, Tableau friends and family. It is a fine Wednesday, September the 19th, and we are here today to do Workout Wednesday, week 38. Let's start this week's walkthrough. Okay, so today it looks like we're looking at a pretty basic scatter plot with some bands or big ass numbers if you're not familiar with the acronym. Uh, some parameters here that are probably going to slice the data in a different way. I'm guessing this is going to swap out the dimensions. This is a simple parameter that we can build. These are probably other parameters that do different things. Separate out the years. It looks like M has all years here. And if you click this button, you'll get the years split out. Uh, these here look to be discrete headers to me. So I know I'm working with discrete blue pills here. This all segments label looks to be a header as well with a continuous access for profit and down here we have a continuous access for sales so this could probably be accomplished a few different ways and we'll just see where this takes us as we build it out reference line none or average let's see what that does it probably adds in some reference lines and we can take them away that's interesting i don't know off the top of my head how to accomplish that but we'll see if we can figure it out let's get started all right so as you saw last week what i like to do with workout wednesday is go through the instructions and see if there's anything that immediately pops out to me as easy to do so that's what i'm going to do now i could set the dashboard size that's easy and wants this to be four sheets tiled i don't exactly know how that's going to work out right now so i'm not going to be able to do that I could create a scatter plot. That's fine, that's probably where we'll start. Bands of total marks, total sales, total profit. Those will be easy, we'll do those at the end. Supporting information, change how the data is sliced. I think what we're gonna work on is those parameters and kind of swapping out. That's gonna be the hardest part of this whole workout. So let's start building these parameters. So I have one that I think is just swapping out the dimension in the view. Easy enough. So let's go ahead and build this slice by parameter. I'm gonna navigate over to Tableau and just start building parameters. I like to name all my parameters with an undercase P, a lowercase P. I don't know what undercase means. But this helps me know what is a parameter and what is not a parameter. A lot of times I'll build a parameter that would typically share the same name as the dimension I'm going to reference it in. So adding that lowercase p just helps me delineate which one's which. I'm gonna make this a list. Float is fine. And we have four options. And I'll usually use float because I like to use numbers in my calculated fields and display text to my users. So we have subcategory, manufacturer, product name, and customer. And we can go ahead and give those to our users, but keep the numbers for us in our calculated fields. Looks right. So we have one parameter built. Separate segments, yes or no. Okay. Gonna name it something that partially makes sense. This is Boolean, so one and zero make the most sense to me. Separate years, yes or no. I'm just gonna go ahead and duplicate my separate segment because it's the same idea. Year sep, that works. Looks like that didn't get saved. I'm gonna go check my other parameter and see if that's looking like a zero there. I may as well put the caps lock key on because I know Anne likes to do everything in caps. And reference line, none or average. Again, another Boolean. So I'll just duplicate one that I already have and just name it something that makes a little bit of sense to me. I'm gonna swap these around. 
Okay, so we have our four parameters that we need to control this scatter plot. And this really is a great way to give users control over what is displayed and what is not displayed. Um, gives them a power to find their own insights. You don't have to tell it for them. You don't have to tell the story. They can find their own. Okay, so I have four parameters. That's done. Easy enough. Let's start building out the scatter plot and see if we can start matching some of Ann's numbers. So if we take profit and sales, and then we want to throw a dimension on it. So I need to build out my slice by dimension. So I'm going to create a calculated field that will show us um, the level of detail that we need on the view. So we're going to call this slice by. Like I said, that would be a similar name to my parameter, but I know this is the dimension because it does not have the lowercase p. I don't really remember which one, so I'm just going to go ahead and expand this, and this will help me know which to reference without getting out of my flow of the calculated field. Okay, that looks good. Indent that a little bit. And what this is doing, if you're not familiar with the case statement, is it's just saying look at the parameter here. And when that option is selected, when one, then bring back the subcategory field. If I were to click customer, the parameter value is four. We're displaying customer. And it's going to bring back customer name. So that's done. We have a new dimension here, and we're just going to drag this to our detail and create that scatter plot. So now we have quite a bit of marks for customer and a sales and profit scatter plot. So far, so good. So let's go ahead and check off some of these. Create controls that allow the user to. OK, we've created four controls. That's great. And let's go ahead and try to match. So let's go to our Tableau workbook, go to subcategory, and see if we can get um, and scatter plot. It looks like we're missing a level of detail. There's a color component here. So we need to build that out to start matching her numbers. Segment on color. Okay, we can go do that. Done. And that shape looks pretty good. Copiers, consumer, 24,000 and 69,000. And hopefully this is the same mark right here. Consumer, Canon, interesting, okay. It looks like we have manufacturer on here. I have the wrong one because Tableau reset, right? Copiers in the consumer category, 24,000, 69,000. So we have the same scatter plot that Ann does. It also looks like she's using um, circle marks instead of shapes with a little bit of transparency and a white border. So we can go and change that. Just going to change it to circle, change my borders to white and adjust the opacity here down to something like maybe 75. It's not really spelled out in the instructions, so I don't know for sure. But as long as we can see a little bit of overlap, I think we'll be OK. So what else is going on here in the scatter plot? I don't know what these do right now. So let's try to build out this functionality. And clearly has something on rows and columns in a discrete dimension. Because we see these two headers here. We're looking at all years, all segments right now. And those will get altered when we trigger these parameters. So if I click on yes, separate the segments. Let's see what we do. 
So instead of all segments, I'm looking at the actual segment from the data source. I think this is a pretty simple parameter in calculated field. So we're going to take our seg sep parameter and create a calculated field with it. If you remember, we set this parameter up to be zeros and ones behind the scenes and yes and no for the user. So the zero was the no. I don't want my se segment separated. And when it's no, and was displaying all segments. So pretty much all we need to do is on the zero, we're just going to hard code in all segments. And since I know that there's only zero and one, I can just call an else and reference the segment field. And this should be all we need to put on our rows. So I have consumer, corporate, and home office. And that's what we want. We also have the label here, so we're good to go. I'm altogether assuming that the year separator is the exact same functionality. So I'm just going to duplicate my segment displayed calculated field and edit it to support the year parameter. All you need to do is go in and change your parameter that the calculated field is referencing and change up some of the text. trying to pull year of order date, which is actually a number, which is yelling at me for that. So I can just go in here and say string year of order date. That would work. I could also say date name year of order date. That should work. Um, and I'll try that one and see what, what happens. Basically, you need to give it a string because you're hard coding a string here. So the types need to match. That's what the problem was. So if I put year display here, I'll get my year split out. Let's see if it matches Anne's. So she has just year number here. And it says all years if you're triggered on uh, no. Okay. So there we go. No and no. All segments, all years. I want to hide these field labels. And we can move on. OK, so at this point, I'm hoping the rest comes pretty easy. Um, let's see what we can figure out um, based on the rest of Anne's instructions and her published workbook. See, what have we done here that have helped us out? I think we're still kind of figuring things out. We have these parameters working how we need them. And what we haven't done is built this reference line, yes or no. I'm really not sure how to take away a reference line. I'm guessing that if there is a null value in the calculated field that this parameter is referenced in, the reference line will not display anywhere. So that's what I'm going to go with as my gut feeling. So we have average or nothing. And let's see if we can build that. First of all, we need to give, um, we're going to build two reference lines, right? Two dynamic reference lines. So we'll say ref line sales, and let's build out um, this value. And I like to do case when I'm building a swappable dimension. And for whatever reason, I like to use if statements when I'm building a measure. So don't ask me why. It's just kind of how I operate. So if we don't want that reference line. I think I'm just going to call null. This is the sales. 
So ref line, ref line sales, let's see if that gets us where we need to go. This is just a first pass. I'm not sure that this is exactly right, but I think it's going to be close. So I can drop that on my view in the detail and hit my sales axis and add a reference line. Multiple ways to do this, yes, but this is just my comfortable workflow. Okay, we're already on average, so I'm just going to hit the maximum and go from there. I'm not seeing anything immediately show up because I have show reference line as none, which is a good sign. And now we have one here. So 2529, and let's see if we can match up with Ann. Forty-five oh four three. That changed a little bit. Um, what I'm going to do is actually pull up the summary card for the worksheet and see if I can figure that out. So we have forty-five oh four three there, which matches what Anne's has. So what I think we need to do is just edit our calculated build a little bit. I'm going to put it on average still. <clears throat> and I'm going to try to alter this to sales and see if we get there. 45043. So this summary card helped me out a lot. I see that I'm looking at sum of sales, and the average of sum of sales is 45043. So that's what made me put sum in here instead of average. I think we can pretty safely move on. What I want to do is actually open up the split and see if I get um, the same result that Ann does. So if I separate the segments, do I get the same numbers still? So 25274, 41538. Let's just check if we're on 25274, 41538. Okay, so that's what we want to do. We can move on. Let's build the profit reference line. It's becoming pretty clear to me as I work on this that our four sheets tiled means that the, um, the big ass number sheets are individualized. So those are going to be our four sheets, those three big ass number sheets and this scatter plot. Just going to finish building out our reference line here. So sum of profit average, hit OK, and we have 7889. Let's see if that matches up here. So we're good. So our four parameters work. Our colors are looking the same. And everything's looking OK except for formatting. Let's go ahead and build out these. Um, worksheets here. So 51 total marks. Pretty sure that's just going to be number of records. It's interesting. I'm not quite sure how to build that immediately. So it'll be probably some type of level of detailed calculation with account distinct as the interior aggregation. So I'm going to go ahead and see. I'll keep the view the same here because this is what I have on my Tableau screen. Let's see if we can get there with the calculation. Let's just say total marks. And we're going to say hmm. Actually, does that even change? It would still be 51 total marks. That changes things. That doesn't. Segment wouldn't change the marks, but year would. Also, the category would. We always have segment on our view. Okay, so I don't need that. I do need year, and I do need the slice by dimension. So I wonder if I just did.
We'll see if this gets us there off the bat. So total marks, it's just a guess initially. And I'm just going to go ahead and try to validate this. So I said some number of records. I'm just going to take the max and see if that gets me there. I have 780, which I don't want. I don't think that's right at all. So I was back on split out by segment only. So you have product name, no, no, average. So we can say product name, no, no, average. We have 29 total records. That's not correct. So I'm just going to try something different. I'm just going to say count distinct of all those dimensions put together. Four thousand two hundred fifty four. Ooh, that's good. Okay, so let's click some buttons and see if we can get there. So manufacturer, segment, and year are all on yes. And go to my other sheet. Fifteen eighty five and fifteen eighty five. So I think we're good. Um, so let's go back and look at what we did. So the total marks, I'm essentially just count, counting the distinct combinations of those three dimensions. So what I did was just concatenate them together with this pipe delimiter inside a count distinct calculation. And that should reevaluate every time these parameters are triggered because I'm referencing the dynamic dimensions inside the calculation. Segment is always on our um, level of detail, so I can just use segment inside of there. Okay, so 1585. And I think we can just go ahead and start to edit this. We're going to inject our parameters here. Oops. Manufacturer. And I'm just going to create a calculated field for segment. Because if I put my parameter there, it's just going to show yes. So I need to reference a calculation to display that or not. And I believe this is just going to go away. I'm looking at this right here manufacturer and segment. So if I do no, I'm guessing that's going to uh, disappear. Actually not. So that's always there. So we're going to take the easy way out and just hard code it in. Fifteen eighty five total marks sliced by manufacturer and segment. And when I swap out my slice by dimension, that's going to update to dynamic text. Product name, and it changes the number because I change the dimension inside um, my count distinct calculation. OK, so there's one. This setup's pretty similar. So what I want to do is actually format this sheet and then just duplicate it for the other two. Um, again, there's no instructions for what these actually are. So I'm just going to guess. That one looks a little bit bigger. 
That one probably looks the same. Sorry for the seizure. And that one's a little smaller. Good enough. If you're not going to give directions, you can't tell me how to do it. So there we go. I'm imagining we should turn the tooltips off because all the detail we need is already in that number. So we don't need anything. We just need to display that. Let's duplicate. Total sales. So we're going to go ahead and just add sales and hope that that matches. That should probably never change because there's no filters in play. Minimum of zero, maximum of 24,500. That's this mark out here. And I think we're gonna have to reference um, the slice by dimension in a calculation because that max and min are actually going to change every time you just put this on the view. They won't change. Oh, it does change. So it's a similar calculation to our total marks. Let's go ahead and duplicate that and see if we can get there. And I'm just going to swap this out to be a level of detail that looks at those dimensions and see if we can just get there quickly. Twenty two, six thirty eight. So we're on subcategory no and no. Subcategory no and no. 22,638 still. So the max sales is way out here. What did we do wrong? I think maybe if we take segment out. No. Might get hung up here for just a moment. So we said buy year display, slice by, and segment, what was the max sales? Maybe if we do this here, we just said sum of sales. There we go. Just getting my order wrong. Can duplicate this. Rename, call it min sales and drop this on here with a different aggregation. So 560, and we're good. Like I said, we just need to alter our text and formatting just a tiny bit. Don't need that there anymore. It says total sales, not total marks. And we have min and max. We don't need sliced by blah, blah, blah. Okay, close enough. Just format these numbers. Strangely enough, it's looking like these big ass number formatting and, and calculations are actually much harder um, than the scatter plot was. I didn't really expect that. Okay, so we're good to go there. 
and this total profit, the last one I think is going to be the easiest because it's going to be extremely similar to the sales sheet. So I just duplicated the sales sheet, put in profit, we're there already. I'm gonna change some wording here. So instead of total sales, we'll say total profit. Min and max. So we're just gonna duplicate these two and swap out the measure and rename. Okay, and I'm just gonna drag those directly on top of the existing fields, which will actually just replace it in the view for me. Okay, 97, 28, we're good. Let's do some number formatting. We want currency, custom, none, with negative values in parentheses, great. Okay, so we have three big ass number sheets, a scatter plot. That's a normal title. Um, and I think we're just about done. So let's just go ahead and build the dashboard. And the last thing will probably be the tooltips on the scatter plot. I forgot about those. So let's just build the dashboard and move on. So our dashboard is 1100 by 900. And hopefully you're feeling completely in home stretch mode right now. The dashboard is tiled with four sheets and like I said um, in a previous video not for workout Wednesday but what I like to do is just drop a master container there and start building out my grid so I'm just gonna drop a vertical floating and put this at 0 0 1100 900 I'm also gonna drop two blanks in here just to help guide me along the big ass numbers will be housed in a horizontal container. So I can start doing that. We'll hide the titles here. Hide, hide, and move on. Our scatter plot can just exist by itself under that horizontal container. We can rename this to sales versus profit. Hide the title there, remove this blank. Down here we have our parameters who look to be in a horizontal distributed evenly. So we can put that right under our sheet. We also have those parameters in our dreaded tiled object, but I'm gonna get rid of them for now because they're bugging me. I'm just gonna add the parameters back from here. No, put it right back in the tile. Oh, well. Just float out all of these parameters for now. Along with our color legend. And then delete the tiled object forever. Again, if you want to fl grab floating objects and drop them into a layout container, you simply have to hold shift when you get the object floating over the container area. You can select entire containers by double clicking on them. And I'll say distribute evenly. And we can do our formatting from here. So slice by segment year and reference line. Slice by segment year reference line. Let's rename this. I usually like to give it one space in front so it lines up more evenly with the edge of the parameter. Might have spelled that wrong. I did. So, ah, rate. And 
Okay, so we are good there. We also have our color legend down here on its own. Horizontally, to get a color legend to go horizontally, you essentially just need to alter the height of it. Tableau will try to display it vertically if it can, but if you make it small enough, it will go horizontal for you. I also don't want to have this little uh, toggle here, which is essentially useless because all three of her segments are in display. But if I want to make sure that doesn't happen on public, I can just widen the space between those. We have this little Workout Wednesday thing. It's not necessary. Um, I know why Ann does it. I'm just not going to do it because I don't want to spend the time on it right now. Um, segment looks to be capitalized as everything else with M.U. Jackson. And we're looking pretty good here. So we have segment down at the bottom. Looks a little too tight. So I'm just going to give it a little more height. So let's try 35 and see if it stays horizontal. That's good. We're going to edit the height here. We're going to maybe call this 80. And that looks to be, I don't know, maybe 120. Okay, so we're good. We just need to do a little bit of formatting and then we'll be done. So we rotate our labels here. All segments profit. Um, and looks to have her grid lines turned off. So we're gonna go ahead and turn off all of these grid lines, zero lines, etc., etc. Turn off our borders. And now we have a nice scatter plot. We need to alter our reference lines to be dotted lines in a more light gray tone. And we're actually just going to show the value. I think I chose the wrong gray. Okay, let's see, Do Ann, does Ann's reference lines recalculate? Yes, they do, so we'll leave that on. Okay, sales, all caps. Profit, all caps. And I am seeing a little bit of border so let's just go ahead and see if we can mimic that. It's like just the ever so subtlest border. But not on the headers. I think that's about right. See if we have a similar looking view at this point. So we have years across the top. Looks like they need to be a little bit bigger, a little bit bolder. Looks like Anne want segment to be capitalized. So we're just going to call a calculated field really quick. Let's say upper segment, which will capitalize the text. And we're going to go to our segment field and just replace all references to our new upper segment. That will give us what we need there. OK. 
Okay, it also looks like there's probably some padding, which is very good practice. So we're just going to add that in here so things come off the edge a little bit. And outside of the tooltip here, we're probably good to go. So we have year, segment, the dimension, profit, and sales. Gonna move things around to get them how Anne has them here. So we have year followed by a comma followed by our segment. On a new line, we have our slice by dimension. So I'm gonna take out the slice by title, which is hard coded there, and swap in my parameter. Keep the value there. And then we just have profit and sales. Looks good to me. So I think we're done here. Um, I hope this was valuable to you. There were a few tricks here that needed to be figured out. And again, surprisingly, I think the big ass numbers were harder than the scatter plot to build. Um, and that really comes with time. You might find the opposite. But I've worked with parameters quite often and for a long time, so they become pretty easy for me to know what's going on um, when people are using parameters for different things. So the scatter plot was fairly obvious from the outset. What does get me hung up sometimes is referencing items inside a scatter plot in a different sheet. So these big ass numbers had to look at the view that you were displaying and find the right number. I think that's the hardest part to this whole workout. Again, hopefully this was valuable. Hopefully you enjoyed watching me build it, and hopefully you got something out of it. Until next week, thanks for listening.